A city searching Toronto's mayoral by-election, Toronto, Canada's largest city, a melting pot of cultures. In 2023, it found itself at a crossroads. The mayoral by-election was in full swing with a record number of candidates vying for the top job. Among them were several faces from Toronto's Chinese community. Their presence, while significant, brought to light the unique challenges faced by Chinese immigrants in Canadian politics. The road to City Hall, it seemed, was paved with more than just campaign promises. The city's political landscape, much like its streets, was a blend of the familiar and the new. This election was different. The stakes were high, the issues were complex, and the electorate was more diverse than ever before. For many Chinese Canadians, this election was a chance to have their voices heard. But were they truly being listened to? Wei Zhentang, a name that resonated in Toronto's Chinese community. I was a successful businessman, a community leader, and now a mayoral candidate. My campaign, however, quickly became a lightning rod for controversy. I found myself on the receiving end of intense scrutiny, much of it fueled by misinformation and prejudice. The media, often quick to label and stereotype, didn't always help. Accusations were thrown around, my ties to mainland China were questioned, my policies were misrepresented. The underlying message was clear, I, and by extension the Chinese community I represented were somehow not Canadian enough. This wasn't just about politics, this was about identity, this was about belonging. The experience of Wei Zhentang, while unique in its specifics, highlighted a broader issue. Chinese political candidates often find themselves navigating a minefield of misconceptions. Their backgrounds, their values, even their understanding of democracy are often viewed through a distorted lens. The very concept of democracy, while seemingly universal, carries different meanings across cultures. Western democracies, with their emphasis on individual rights and freedoms, stand in contrast to China's more collectivist approach. These are not just abstract political theories. They are deeply ingrained cultural values, and they often lead to misunderstandings and misinterpretations when Chinese candidates enter the Western political arena. The differences between Western and Chinese political cultures are not insurmountable, but they do require understanding and sensitivity. In China, for example, public criticism of the government is often seen as a threat to social harmony. In the West, it's considered a cornerstone of free speech. These contrasting views can lead to situations where a Chinese candidate's actions are misinterpreted or even demonized. Similarly, the role of media in both cultures is vastly different. In China, the media is often seen as an arm of the government. In the West, it's meant to be a watchdog, holding those in power accountable. These differences in media consumption and interpretation can create a significant barrier for Chinese candidates trying to connect with a Western audience. Section 5. The Media Maze, Navigating Bias and Stereotypes The media plays a crucial role in shaping public perception, and when it comes to Chinese political candidates, that role can often be problematic. Stereotypes abound. Chinese candidates are often portrayed as being secretive, untrustworthy, or beholden to foreign governments. These stereotypes, whether conscious or unconscious, can have a devastating impact on a candidate's chances of success. The issue of media bias goes beyond simple reporting. It's about the narratives that are being pushed. It's about the voices that are being amplified and the voices that are being silenced. For Chinese candidates trying to break through the noise, the media landscape can feel like a minefield. One wrong step, one misconstrued statement, and their campaign can be derailed by accusations of disloyalty or foreign interference. Section 6. Strength in numbers, the power of community support. In the face of such challenges, community support becomes even more critical for Chinese candidates. The Chinese community in Toronto, like many immigrant communities, understands the importance of solidarity. They know what it means to be underrepresented, to have their voices drowned out. And they've learned that the best way to overcome these obstacles is to stand together. Community support takes many forms. It's about volunteering on campaigns. It's about donating to candidates who reflect their values. It's about showing up at rallies and town halls. But most importantly, it's about making their voices heard at the ballot box. Every vote is a statement. Every vote is a step towards greater representation. Section 7. 
leveling the playing field donations and democratic participation. Political campaigns are expensive. There's no getting around it. From advertising to organizing events, the costs can be staggering. And for Chinese candidates who may not have the same access to traditional sources of funding, this can create a significant disadvantage. This is where community donations play a vital role. In a democracy, every citizen should have the opportunity to support the candidates they believe in. But the reality is that money talks. Large donations from corporations or wealthy individuals can give certain candidates an unfair advantage. That's why small donations, even a few dollars from a large number of people, can make a big difference. It's about leveling the playing field and ensuring that all voices, regardless of their financial means, have a chance to be heard. Section 8, Beyond the Ballot Box, The Fight for Fair Representation. The fight for fair representation goes beyond election day. It's about ensuring that Chinese Canadians have a seat at the table. It's about having their voices heard in city council meetings, in community forums, and in the halls of power. It's about making sure that their concerns are addressed and that their perspectives are considered in every decision that affects their lives. This means engaging with elected officials. It means holding them accountable for their promises. It means advocating for policies that benefit the Chinese community and the city as a whole. It's not just about having a voice. It's about making sure that voice is heard loud and clear. Section 9, Bridging the Divide, Understanding for a Stronger Toronto. Toronto's strength lies in its diversity. But diversity without understanding is simply a collection of differences. To truly thrive, Toronto needs to bridge the divide between its communities. This requires open dialogue, empathy, and a willingness to challenge preconceived notions. The misconceptions faced by Chinese immigrants are not unique to them. They are a reflection of the broader challenges faced by many minority groups. By addressing these challenges head on, by promoting understanding and respect, Toronto can become a model for inclusive democracy. Section 10, a more inclusive future, embracing diversity in politics. The Toronto mayoral by-election may be over, but the conversation it sparked about representation, diversity, and inclusion must continue. It's a conversation that needs to happen not just in Toronto, but in cities and towns across Canada and beyond. The future of democracy depends on the active participation of all its citizens. That means creating a political landscape where everyone, regardless of their background, feels empowered to raise their voices, to share their stories, and to shape the future of their communities. It means embracing diversity, not just in words, but in actions. It means building a world where everyone has an equal opportunity to lead.